Hello, in this video we'll take a look at some application problems in business calculus that apply the ideas of derivative and we'll take a look at some problems in section 4.2. Let's start with number 9 and here is we have a situation uh, the cost and thousands of dollars of airing X television commercials during a Super Bowl is given by this function. For part A uh, find the marginal cost function and use it to estimate how fast the cost is increasing at x equals 4 and compare this with the exact cost of the airing fifth commercial. Now, uh, the idea of marginal cost, revenue, profit will be very common in this course and also uh, this, these sections and these are the ideas from economics. But basically what we do, we can find the derivative of the cost function, which is c prime of x and 150 is a constant, so it's gone. 2250x becomes 2250 minus 0.02x squared becomes negative 0.04x. So that's marginal cost function. We can plug in 4 and we get 2249.84. Now keep in mind that's in thousands already. So we can multiply it by 1000 to get the actual amount, which is 2249,840. If you think about it, it makes sense uh, for a Super Bowl commercial for the cost of one of them. Now, how do we find the exact cost? Uh, one way you can do this, if you plug in 5 into the original cost function, that will actually give you the total cost of all 5 commercials. So if you add them all up, all 5 of them, here is about what we get, about 11,000 um, and so on. Um, and if we do the same thing with four, that would give us the total cost of the first four commercials. So if you think about it, if you subtract them, basically what will be left over is the cost of the fifth one. And this is how we can find it exactly. And so the difference between the two, it will be uh, 2,249.82 thousand. Again, multiply by thousand, we'll get 2,249,000. 1,820. Now if you compare it with the cost we got from the marginal cost, the difference between the two is only $20, which if you think about it, it's not bad for uh, millions of dollars if you're talking about that. That's uh, The derivative will give us a pretty close answer if you think about it. So it's pretty interesting to compare them. Now for part B, we need to find average cost, again evaluated at x equals 4. What does the answer tell you? We can take the cost function divided by x, which is the simplified version, is right here. And if we plug in 4, we get a slightly different answer, which is uh, 2,287,420. What does it mean? It means the approximate cost per commercial for the first four commercials, rather than the fifth one, is about is slightly higher than the answer above. So uh, you probably get a break after a certain amount of commercials. Okay, and number 11, that deals with uh, revenue and profit. So a little bit uh, more involved with the cost. Here is we have uh, your college newspaper sells uh, newspapers for 90 cents a copy. The cost of producing X copies of an edition is given by this function that you can get by regression given certain data. But let's say if it's just given. We need to calculate the marginal revenue and profit functions to do that, we need to find actual revenue and profit and then take the derivative. So, revenue is fairly simple. If we know we sell each one at 90 cents a copy, then it would be 0.90x and that would be in dollars, basically. Take the derivative of that, we'll just get 0 0.90, which is a constant. Profit is the difference between the revenue and the cost. If we distribute the negative and collect like terms, we'll get negative 0.001x squared plus 0.80x minus 70. Take derivative of that, which is negative 0.02x plus 0.80. That's marginal profit right here. Now, for part B, compute the revenue and profit and also the marginal revenue and profit if you have produced and sold 500 copies of the latest edition. This, uh, we can simply plug in 500 into the four functions that we found in part A. We'll get $450 for revenue and 90 cents for marginal revenue, and that should be per copy. Um, profit at 500 copies is 
and uh, the marginal profit is negative 20 cents per copy. So what's actually, what, is, what does it mean? The revenue is $450 and is increasing by 90 cents per copy, which again makes sense if you sell each one at 90 cents. The profit, however, is $80 and is decreasing by 20 cents per copy. So it can happen that you can sell too many of them and you need to uh, keep that in mind. Maybe the cost increase if you sell and produce too many. For part C, let's take a look at this one. For which value of X is the marginal profit zero? Interpret the answer. The problem itself is not too bad. Marginal profit, you take the equation, set it equal to zero. Here it gives you X equals 400. But the question is, what does it mean? We found that uh, 400 copies, if you recall that the profit is a quadratic function with a negative a, so it looks something like this, like an upside down parabola, if you remember from algebra, and the marginal cost, or actually it's derivative, slope of tangent line, if it's horizontal, it's zero right at this point, so we can actually find maximum profit by setting the derivative equal to zero and solving for x. It's something we'll see again in the later chapters too. So it turns out that the maximum profit occurs when 400 copies are sold. So again, that's a useful way to find out uh, what is the maximum profit that you can make or revenue and so on. And again, you can take the derivative, set it equal to zero and solve. So that's one way to do it. Here's another problem, number 19. A car wash firm calculates its daily profit in dollars depends on the number n of workers into boys according to this formula right here. So a slightly different way to define the profit rather than in terms of uh, number of items you sell. Here it depends on number of workers, so we use n for each worker. Calculate the marginal profit, sorry, marginal product at employment level of 50 workers and interpret the result. What does marginal product means? It means a very similar idea of marginal profit. It's basically defined as the derivative of the profit function p prime of n. Again, we're using n rather than x. For example, p prime of 20 is defined as the increased decrease of profits per additional worker at the employment of 20 workers. So if we calculate it at 50, we find a derivative, which is 400 minus 0.5 n squared becomes 1n, 0.5 times 2, and if we plug in 50, we'll get 350. So again, what does it mean? That means the profit is increasing by $350 per each additional worker at this point, or employment level of 50 workers. That's it for that one. So just a couple more. Here is another one. 21, the daily cost to manufacture generic trinkets for gullible tourists is given by cost function and again here is a cost function where x is the number of trinkets. Now as x increases the marginal cost and we need to select one option and here we need to analyze the graph. So what's happening to the graph of marginal cost? Does it a increase, b decrease, or c increase then decrease, or d decrease then increase? Well again we can take the derivative of the cost above which will give us negative 0.002x plus 0.3. And here I can just take a look at this equation and tell right away uh, that it's decreasing. How do I know without even graphing? Well, if you think about it, it's a linear function. y equals some x plus b, because here is the x, here is a constant, and slope of this function is negative 0.002. It's a negative slope. Again, it's good just to look at it because if you graph it, it's a very small decrease, so you may not be able to tell if it's actually decreasing. But because it's negative slope, it's always decreasing. So it's uh, the answer is part B, or option B. And now we need to do the same thing with average cost, which we can find again, divide the function by x. That's the simplified version. This one I would actually graph. It's a little bit harder to tell because it's a rational function. You should actually see another part for negative x, but if you think about it, x should always be positive because it's number of trinkets. So we can just take a look at the positive side, but it doesn't matter. Even if you look at both of them, you'll notice both of them actually decrease and the positive one decreases. So again, the answer is B. 
And again, if you think about it, if both marginal cost and average cost decrease, that's actually a good thing. That means cost per item is decreasing. For part C, we compare them. The marginal cost is A, greater than B, equal to, or C, less than the average cost when X is 100. So here we just pick an X and uh, let's interpret the result. So the, again, the calculation part's fairly easy. We'll plug in 100 into both uh, C prime of X and C bar of X. We'll get 0.1 for marginal cost and 5.2 for average. It's pretty clear that the marginal cost is less than the average cost in this case. But what does it mean? Again, since the marginal cost is less than the average cost, what does it mean that the cost function, or actually the cost itself, is decreasing? Which again, it's good to know that uh, the more you produce in this case, the cost would be decreasing. And so that's good. It's actually good to produce more trinkets to fool the gullible tourist, I suppose. And one more problem in this section. This one is about controlling emissions, probably in a fairly green city. Something, um, I don't know, maybe like San Francisco or something like that. But anyway, here is number 25. The cost of controlling emissions at a firm rises rapidly as the amount of emissions reduced increases. So here is a possible model. Again, this is just a, a, a guess based maybe on regression. C of Q equals to 4,000 plus 100 Q squared, where Q is the reduction in emissions, let's say it's quantity actually, in pounds of pollutants per day, and C is the daily cost. And if a firm is currently reducing its emissions by 10 pounds per day, what is the marginal cost of reducing emissions further? It's kind of hard to read what is actually asking, but again, we need to find the marginal cost and to figure out how much it costs to reduce it further, which is for the next pound per day, is, would be to plug in x equals 10 into the derivative. So we find the derivative, which is 4,000 is gone, it's a constant, 100q squared becomes 200q. We plug in 10, which becomes 2,000. The units are $2,000 per pound, and that's how much reduction in emissions would cost for each additional pound. All right, which is quite a bit. Here we have a government clean air subsidies to the firm are based on this formula. S of Q equals to 500 Q, where Q is again reduction in emissions and S is the subsidy in dollars. At which reduction level does the marginal cost surpass the marginal subsidy? So again, if you think about it like demand supply sort of thing, let's ma match the cost to the subsidy. Uh, both marginal cost and marginal subsidy. If you set them equal to each other and you solve, we get Q equals 2.5 pounds per day reduction. So that's where they match. Anything beyond that, uh, because marginal subsidy is a constant, any Q larger than that, the, the cost would surpass the subsidy, basically. So anything above 2.5 pounds, it's not going to be uh, profitable for that firm. Now, in part C, it's asking us to calculate the net cost function, which is basically the difference between the cost and the subsidy, and find the value of Q that gives the lowest net cost. What is the lowest net cost? And compare your answer to part B and interpret the result. What does it mean? It's almost like if you think about a break-even point, you can find it in a couple of ways. You can set the cost equal to the revenue and solve it that way. Or you can find profit function, set it equal to zero, and find it that way. That's basically what it's asking us to do. Here is a net cost function. If you subtract them, we'll get 4,000 plus 100Q squared minus 500Q, which if again, if you note, it's a quadratic function, this time with positive A. So it's uh, facing up, so we may have a minimum right at this point. Again, the slope or the derivative is zero. So n prime of q, we'll set it equal to 0, q is 2.5, surprise, surprise, same as part b. So the net cost is minimized at 2.5 pounds per day reduction, and the answer is the same as part b. And I guess you can uh, plug it in uh, to find the actual net cost into the original n q. We haven't done that yet, but you can simply plug it in um, 2.5 into n q and get your answer. And that's it for this section.